Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Did you bring your thinking caps? Because it's time to put them on. Because the conversation starts. Good on you, mate. <laughs> what is going on there in Australia where you are, Rebecca? Is it, It's not raining where you are, no floods, huh? Well, we've had a lot of rain and it has been full on, but where I live in particular, the rain has eased. We had mild flooding. The biggest areas are up north um, where I'm not living, so I'm very grateful that I'm in a good space. Well, you guys have just for the last three or four years just had hella weather from the Absolutely. from the fires to the rain and back and forth. But there's something going on down there in Australia brains. Absolutely. It's the edge with me and my amazing guests. OK, I've got so many amazing guests from Australia, everywhere from Perth to Queensland to Sydney to Melbourne. I love my Australians and they love me. And you guys are really doing some great work down there. Brains, today we have Rebecca Gabrielle with us on the edge. And we are going to talk about some spiritual stuff. Oh, yeah. So get your hoo-hoo on. Get ready. Okay, no judgment. We want to educate you. We want to elevate you on different sources of energy, different ways, different frequencies, different ways of communication, different ways of unlocking and uncovering things in your subconscious mind. Yes, it can be scary, but the unfamiliar is scary. But what you discover is all worth it. Uh, Rebecca has training in psychology and energy work. She is a spiritual guidance coach, and she reads the tarot cards. I'm going to ask her about the cards. I'm going to ask her about the power. I'm going to tell you guys a little story about what happened with me the first time somebody read my cards. And, uh, you know, just really kind of see what kind of hand we're going to be dealt. So, Brains, help me welcome her to the edge today, Rebecca Gabrielle. How are you, beautiful? Thank you. Thank you, April, so much. I really appreciate you giving me some time here. It's wonderful to speak with you and all of, all of your listeners. <laughs> yeah, you know, the Brains, they, they come from all over the place. And some people are skeptics. Some people are all on board. And some people are just, you know, bantering back and forth trying to find themselves. How did you find yourself in this space, Gabrielle? I call you Gabrielle, Miss, Ms. Gabrielle. Miss Gabrielle, Rebecca is just fine. <laughs> How did I end up in the spiritual space? Is yeah. That yeah. yeah. I, I think I've that. always known since I was a child that I was very aware of an other presence in my life. My mum was a psychic and, um, and I, I just had this incredible intuitive ability. And I, I did have a personal experience when I was 16. It was quite an out-of-body experience where I got a chance to really appreciate the energy of the divine and the immense love that comes from the divine. Um, it was a, a mind-blowing experience and uh, it sort of set me up to understand that I had a very significant purpose in my life and this would probably occur in my mid to later life and sure enough that's what happened and due to my own personal experiences and a big change in my life it gave me that opportunity to step into the spiritual space and really grow that aspect of myself so I've been reading for people for probably a good nine to ten years now and uh, I absolutely love it it's it's something that I get to do I get to share that gift with others and basically I see myself as a channel to bring in beautiful divine messages of love for others to give them clarity to help them on their soul journey well you're doing a lot of heavy lifting there madam yes you are <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about your your experience what happened to you well, when I was 16, I was going through, as many teenagers do, going through a lot of uh, questioning about life, the meaning of life, and sensing that I had this connection that felt beautiful, um, but I didn't know what it all meant. And so I remember a time where I was, um, uh, it was almost like a halfway between a sleeping and a waking experience where all time and sense of physicality left me. Oh. And for, for a period of time, I don't even know how long it was, for a period of time I experienced 
Oh, the best way I can describe it, and there are really no words to describe um, spiritual experiences. You know, when people say they've seen a white light when they're feeling like they're passing over and dying, well, it was kind of that experience, no sense of the physical world, um, but this enormous, beautiful feeling of love that came all over me, through me, and that answered my question, and my question was, how will I know what divine love is? Mm. I was very fearful of being tricked or scammed or, or not understand the truth. Mm -hmm. And what came over me was so undeniably um, strong and powerful and true. There are no human words to describe it. And from that moment onwards, that experience of feeling that touch of the divine, I knew. I knew and there would never be a question that I would not be able to discern the difference between what is true divine love and what isn't. Well, I had an out-of-body experience. Brains, I'm not going to share too much with you because I can't tell you everything about me. But I felt the divine. I was able to see my soul hover over my body. And I wasn't dead. So I get it. And it's in that trance-like state that you're in. Um, again, like you got one foot in and one foot out. So when you came to the realization that this is the divine, this is what you believe, what did you do to develop your gift and your skills? I mean, it's not like, you know, Samantha, the teenage witch, where just you twinkle your nose and then all of a sudden abracadabra, everything comes to you. How did you develop training and really master your gift? Yeah, really great question. Well, at first I was quite frightened by it. Mm -hmm. um, not frightened by the experience, but not knowing what to do with it and frightened to share it. So I think I kept that experience to And myself. the responsibility that comes along with it because it's a lot 100%. of responsibility. A hundred percent. And I was still, you know, a teenager at this time, even though I was, I had a, a great deal of emotional intelligence um, and a lot of people would come to me with their, their issues in life. I didn't know what to do with this. So I kept it to myself. And after a few years, I shared it with my mum. But I kind of pushed it down for a while. But as I, you know, was a young adult and raised a family of three children, they're now all adults. Um, I did a lot of things to foster that growth and I've always had a natural love to connect with other people and understand how they think, how they work, um, to, to be in that space with them. So hence, I, I went through a lot of tertiary education. I studied psychology, I studied counselling, um, I went through coaching and eventually as I was experiencing life, it led me to this change that I, I mentioned before in my life and I went, right, now is the time for me to really get real with this and I and I got a mentor in the spiritual space and began my spiritual development and really I decided to step into my own authenticity and to own my gifts and my purpose and why I was here. What do you say to the person that says that this is hoo-hoo, this is white magic or black magic, that um, we shouldn't be delving in the unknown, tapping untapped spirits, tapping into past life regressions? What do you say to that person that's fearful? Yeah, it comes from a place of fear. It comes from a place of ignorance. And I do understand a lot of people feel that way. Uh, look, I don't judge someone who's in that space. I recognize where their soul is on their particular journey, and that's okay. It doesn't change who I am or what I believe or my focus in life. I know that life is about, we're in the school of life, we're here to learn, and we're all going to be at different stages on that journey. Um, I know what I know. And once you, once you know that at a spiritual level, you can't unknow it. Um, and yes, we are spiritual beings. We are spiritual beings first, having a physical reality. So, you know, that's what I know so, so clearly. Um, and, and the rest is you, you're here to learn certain lessons. We can't mm -hmm. possibly learn everything in life that our soul needs. Mm -hmm. And that's why I do appreciate that we have many lives to learn and grow and evolve as spiritual beings. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And brains, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Until you've been introduced to it. So I understand mm -hmm. that. So tell me a little bit how you got into reading tarot cards. Yeah, well, it, let, it, let me tell you my let me tell you my experience with tarot cards. Great. Well, you know, I was in a very strict religious doctrine. You don't do that. 
You know, that's white magic. That's witchery. That's, you know, you're not supposed to do that. But me being rebellious and being very inquisitive, I said, well, if you say I can't do it, I'm going to try it. (laughs) (laughs) I was at work one day and it was raining and we had a, a, a power outage and I worked for the utility company and there was three Hispanic women and it was me and another lady on the other side. And the Hispanic women would go down to Mexico and they would get their cards read by this woman and they'd come back and you know they'd be talking and then when people were kind of listening they start talking in Spanish so one day one of them brought a book in and she brought her cards and she told me she says April I want to introduce you to it I said well I'm not going to go down there and this is the devil and blah 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 she says let's just do it just do it for fun's sake she read those cards she referred to it in the book I guess she was learning I don't know what the situation was but Rebecca Within 45 days, everything she said, every single thing she said came to fruition. And I didn't know if to laugh or cry. (laughs) And I said, well, is this something that I want to continue to do? Do I really want to know what the future holds like that? Or do I just want to wing it? You know, so it's a lot. And then the person Mm -hmm. like you that Mm -hmm. are the the channel, Mm -hmm. the person that is the conduit that you know there's a lot going through you so my questions to you are number one how you know how do you feel about the the tarot cards and how did you learn to read them yeah and two how do you cleanse yourself after doing a reading for someone because you're holding that space with them yeah thank you really great questions so um how did i learn about the tarot cards I really was drawn to them. Um, I'm quite a very creative person and tarot or oracle cards really are a tool. They, they, they do not hold any power in themselves, right? They are a tool or a vehicle to help us to communicate or for rather spirit and the divine to communicate through us. So I, I was fascinated. Um, I was interested. I began delving and playing with them. Um, But again, there's no power in those cards. What is really required as a a channel is really to be open and and to trust the intuition of what is coming through to you. So um, I use it as a way to communicate. You know, it's a little bit like going to an art gallery sometimes and, and you can interpret a painting in a certain way and it can bring out the nuances Um, of a message for someone in in many ways the tarot and oracle cards do the same so I began to practice using them and developing my own um, uh, way of communicating with spirit and spirit with me it's going to be different for everyone now I've had tarot readings for myself in the past and you are always going to get the light and the dark in every situation and every person So, you know, there are going to be readers out there that perhaps don't have great intentions and then you have those that do have the best of intentions and to channel only light and love. So that's my experience with tarot. Um, It goes goes on for many years and like anything, you practice and you get better and you fine-tune your ability. Yeah. And you become more intuitive. You know, you... It's like a a dial on a radio. You're finding your frequency. You're finding where you, you know, where you land. I get it. I get it. And spirit learns to work with you too. Mm. So for me, you know, I will I will hear a lot of things and I'll get images that represent something or a sense mm. or a feeling in the body. So and everybody's going to be a little bit different. So again, the cards are just the tool to initiate the conversation and to bring the messages through. Mm, okay and so how do you clear yourself after you have held space for someone uh Mm. and you know all the messages that come through whether you decide to share them with your client or not that's your choice but all messages are not going to be quote unquote positive uh they may lead to more questions they may uncover some pain Mm -hmm. they may go back uh, a couple generations or centuries it may be something that is you know your destiny in the future How do you hold that and channel that? That's a lot. First of all, I like to set the intention at the beginning of the reading. And my way of being able to assist a client in the reading is to let them know that I'm here to channel support 
and advice or guidance that is going to assist them on their own path. I don't like to sort of language it in a way to say this is all about fortune telling because I don't really believe that it is, nor do I believe that it's healthy to see it as just fortune telling. Right. So spirit is, spirit's intention is to love and support you as you're learning on your journey. And they will often often will come to a reading with wanting to know certain things. But there is a difference between wanting to know something and what you need to know right. according to where you're at in your journey right now. And my so, mentor, yeah, my mentor, uh, you know, put me up on, as we call it, up on game, got me smart about how to ask the questions. You don't ask the questions in a yes or no. You ask them in an inquisitive way as to what is my part in this? How can I bring this to fruition? How can I do better at this? How can it get any better than this? What else is possible? You ask it in a quandary. You ask it in a curious type of way to get your juices flowing, brains. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it really is understanding we have choice in life. So what are the choices available to me? What is the best way for me to approach Approach this situation is the way the client should be hearing that message and say if something is coming up that feels a little negative then I will say this is a red flag okay it's a red flag because you have a choice to either listen to the guidance or not and so I always because I'm coming from a coaching background too I'm so careful with how I language something or how I phrase the message that comes through so that it's um, it can be heard in a relatable way, not a scary way. And that person can take that piece of information, go, oh, I need to marinate up that and process that, be aware of this. And, and, and that I know that I have choice in the way I respond to a situation that's going to occur. So that's how I set the scene for the reading. In terms of holding the space for the person, I'm very, very careful not to take on board someone else's energy. But of course, we're in that space. And at the end of a reading, um, I always send love and light to that person. And um, and then I go and I disconnect by going out into nature. I go for a walk. I go I'm with the trees or I go down to the beach. Um, that is my way of clearing. And, and, I, and I say a prayer of thanks to my spirit guides. Before a reading, I'm always asking them, please let me know what is the best message for this client. Uh, let me be a clear channel for this client. And then at the end, thank you so much for helping me bring through, through those messages for my client. Gratitude. Gratitude will get you through anything. So do you have your cards there? Oh, I do. <laughs> I've got a lot why, of why don't, you, well, you, why don't you pull a couple for me and see what it says? Oh, you've put me on the spot now. All right, let me just grab some for you. Okay. I want to see what's going to happen, Brains. I want to see what's in the cards for me. Sure. I have a lot Let's of go for it. I love my cards. Got to fix my bangs on this one, Brains. I got to got to look cute for the, for the divine, for the spirit. <laughs> I love my cards. I have a whole um, shelf unit of my cards. Have you have you made your own oracle deck? Actually, no. That is that is something I haven't yet felt the need to do. Um, oh. Not sure. That's, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, and, and that's a lot of spiritual downloads. You know, it's not just like random. You've got to pick the images. Those images have got to represent the message. And, you know, oh. it's, it's a lot. I didn't think that it was that much to it till I got to seeing a couple of them. And there's so many and they're beautiful. They're yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And some very talented artists. So that's not where I'm feeling called right now. Um, but anyway, look, I'm, I've just put my hand on the Quantum Oracle deck at the moment, April. So I'm just going to ask Spirit to bring through one or two cards for us that's going to be relevant for you. So we thank you, Spirit, for your guidance for April today. What's the message that's coming through for April? And of course, given that we're we're doing this at short notice. Thank you, Spirit. All right, here we go. Oh, I love this. Okay. This is beautiful. So I've pulled two cards for you. Ooh, so the first yeah. one is true love. And so this one speaks about 
what we see in terms of a reflection of ourself, whatever, wherever our focus is out there is what is going to be reflected back to us. So if you have true love in your heart, a voice, if that is where you are focusing, that is what's going to be shown back to you. Now, um, I'm sensing that for you, April, right now, it really is a case of checking in with yourself. There are moments when you're feeling that warmth and that love, and there are moments when you are doubting it. So Spirit is just reminding you to focus on having love and seeing through eyes of love, and that will come back to you. Now, the second card here talks about family, friends, and guides. So you are very fortunate to be surrounded by beautiful spiritual energy around you who are regularly speaking with you, April. They which is are. Really lovely. Yeah, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing that you do have a lot of love around you. You have the capacity to tap into that and to have beautiful insights, um, which is fantastic. So always remember that they are with you. They are, caught, they are speaking with you regularly. And I do sense that you do tap into that as a way to be able to guide you in your work, in your relationships with people and in your communications. I do. Um, and so, yeah. and you know, it's, um, it was amazing because I had, was playing my sound bowls uh, yeah. a few days ago. Yeah. And I went into this meditation out of nowhere and I was seeing colors, Rebecca, that I had never seen before. Oh, beautiful. And they were just so prominent. Mm. And I was thanking God for a particular blessing that he has just blessed me and my family with that was unbelievably incredible. Mm. And I was thanking him. But you know what the download I got? It's that now it is your time to be of service. Yes. And yes. so when you say that, that divine, mm -hmm. I got it as clear as a bell and yeah. not a little service. Yeah. I've got to give, yeah. you know, and not just of money, but of yeah. time and energy and resources. I don't know. I've been called to do things like this before yeah. and it's been a great, great turnaround. So thank you for that. That was just confirmation because I know, but I've got to figure it out. Uh, and I'm just going to take my time, but I am being called for service. I am. And and, and, and that is so beautiful. I love that you have that awareness. What they are saying to me, though, is that you're not alone. So regularly check in with them every day. You have a lot of resources available to you. Uh, yeah. One of your strengths is that you have beautiful empathy to tap into how people are feeling and what they're experiencing. Um, and, and this is how you experience your world as well. So well, um, you are not alone on the journey and you, you a, a lot will be asked of you, but you have deep reservoirs within you to assist others and a lot of um, compassion and empathy for others. But you're definitely being helped by those that have passed over mm -hmm. as well as your spirit guides. I've got, and I've got a lot of them and I could, uh, when we're offline, I'm going to tell you some things that's, that's happening <laughs> to me. It's where, again, like you said, you have to tether yourself down. When you are in this space, brains, and you are aware, this is not, this is the supernatural. Just call it what it is. Mm -hmm. And you have to be ready for it. And it, has, it can be scary. Mm -hmm. It can be scary because you understand the responsibility. It's joyful. And you feel so blessed that you have been chosen to be made aware of. It's not that you're special or you're different. Each one of us, I believe, has an intuitive gift. It's just others that know how to manage it. And then there's others that are like you and I that are called to serve. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know? So true. So true. Well, tell me about your book. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. Go, go for it. <laughs> I was going to ask, ask you about the book. Yes. Yes. Thank you. So um, my book, The Power of Soul Loving, A Spiritual Guide to Love and Freedom. This was definitely a channeled book. Um, and sometimes I look back and I, I thumb through the book to read it for a little bit to remind myself. And I go, wow, did I write that? <laughs> no. Well, share a, little, share a little piece of it with us. I want to hear your voice from your, from your own reservoir. Share oh, one, of your, one of your favorite passages with us. Thank you. Um, so, and stop me when you want me to stop. So I've just put, picked a little piece here from chapter eight, the, the shift towards self-love. Um, so we're talking about the possibilities. One of the most important lessons I've learned is looking at life through a different lens to what I've always been accustomed to doing. It's difficult to change what's well embedded and familiar. 
Often we're conditioned from an early age to think, feel and see our world in a particular way. Our upbringing and our environment can have a significant influence in shaping our perspective and the way we see and interpret people, places and events. I was reminded recently that our perception on life is a gift to ourselves. Our reality, our experience of life is how we think about it. Two people can be in the same scene experiencing the same event but have a completely different perspective with different interpretations of what's taking place. With different perspectives and alternative meanings, it can either open or close doors to new possibilities and opportunities. It all depends on how we choose to see and experience our world. Do we see a greater vision with fresh opportunities for growth, expansion and learning? Or do we see obstacles that limit our options? My personal transformation certainly tested my resolve and provided countless opportunities for me to reshape my thinking. There were days when I felt very low in energy and my perspective on life was quite dismal. I found it difficult to see my way out of the drudgery and the problems I was experiencing. My mind played havoc with me and, my, and presented only problems and the what-if scenarios that just seemed to loom bigger and bigger every day. Wow. You know, <laughs> it's a lot of work to write a book. Mm. What was your writing process? What did you do? Did you come out of deep meditations? Did you go out on one of your walks? Did you, oh, yeah. did you go back to previous journals? How did you? No, it was really that? just the most amazing experience. I actually, every day, I at the time was living in a small unit near the beach. Every day I would go down to the beach with my laptop and I would write for hours. Mm. And I suppose... A lot of that just was sort of a real, it was, as I said, it was channeled and I, and I put it all down within about four months of nonstop writing. And look, I said to myself, I had no expectations. I'd never written um, something like this before. And I just said to myself, you know what? I'm going to do it while the inspiration is there. Mm -hmm. The moment I feel that it's not flowing, I'm going to stop, close the laptop, walk away because it was channeled and I didn't want to force it so I didn't give myself a deadline the only thing I told myself was this is a project I'm dedicated to finish because this is my purpose and then of course life happened and I went back to it and the real the real work was going back and revising reading through editing making sure that it flowed and that it was also language in a way that made it relatable to the average person and not filled with a lot of woo woo speak <laughs> right 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 because people wouldn't get it or they would be distracted there's some people yeah. I was talking to someone <laughs> earlier uh some people out there in the universe that I need a thesaurus, a dictionary, and the book to try to figure out what they're talking about. But you have another gift, audibly. I would love to hear you do uh, your book as a download because your voice inflection is just really nice and smooth. You know, you could be, again, sitting there on the beach listening to this, download it in your car. So think about that. I really see that. Oh, that would be thank you, thesaurus. April. It's Yep. It's on my to-do list and yeah. many people have said to me, when am I going to do that audio book? Because yeah. let's say hey, we're all busy people and I listen to a lot of stuff when I'm traveling. I do too. That makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Do you have children? Are you married? I have three beautiful, amazing adult children um, from a very long-term marriage and I'm no longer married. How, however, my children are living life, doing their thing and I'm immensely proud of them. They are. It's true. Our children teach us. <laughs> but what did you teach them about this? And do any of your three children also carry the gift that you and your mother have? Yeah, look, my youngest son, he's highly intuitive and empathic. And um, yes, he gets it. He certainly gets me. And they're all, look, they're very proud of their mum creating a book, writing a book and publishing it. Um, but my youngest son, he certainly, he certainly gets the space. And I do see that he has enormous potential to develop his own intuition. Who knows? He's 24. 
25, 20, 24, <laughs> 24 at this time and still, you know, young and growing and learning, but he's certainly showing huge potential. Um, yeah. some, what are some of the most popular questions that people ask? Let me see if I can guess. Uh, am I going to win the lottery or is he the one for me? Are they going to be in love? Are we going to be in love forever? Um, sometimes people ask about their health, but they're afraid that it may not come back in their favor. So they kind of teeter back and forth with that. But what are some of the most common questions that people ask in a curious way when you're doing a reading for them? Yeah, look, I have to say, um, most of the clients that tend to come to me are women. And for whatever reason, that just seems to be who I tend to attract the most. And I have to say, women are a little bit hesitant to put those questions out there and be quite specific. Mm -hmm. But then again, I also set the scene for them to be open to receive whatever they need to hear mm -hmm. rather than what they want to hear. I've had a few experiences with clients who are so definite about what they want to hear that it actually blocks spirit from helping them. And yes, we do get the questions about love. You know, is this person right for me? Can I trust this person? What's ahead for me on the journey? And they are beautiful, natural questions to ask. And spirit is there to help them understand where their energy is at, what they're likely to attract, and then some few pointers on how to approach the situation. Mm. So that is a common one, relationships. Um, the other for women is, is about their frustration of not being able to be their true self. You know, and we're living in a day and age where we get, we keep getting told what we can and can't do. And so there's that sense of loss of freedom. So they're asking, how can I improve my life? How can I see progress in my life? What do I need to focus on? So spirit is loving questions like that. <laughs> well, it's, it's a lot. And brains, be prepared for the answer. Yeah. The answer is not always what you think it is. You know, sometimes you think it's a definite yes, and it just might be a no. But that no, in actuality, is something that could safeguard you, uh, that can tell you to slow down, or mm -hmm. even give you an opportunity to dodge a bullet. Absolutely. So just because everything is not like a vision board, you know, I tell people too, my vision board, I've got obstacles because that's your warning sign. That is the time for you to stop, pause, think, rethink, adjust, edit, filter, or just give it up altogether. Absolutely. And I love the concept. I often use the terminology of hit that pause button. Don't be in so much of a rush. Allow things to process and evolve. This is a journey. Nothing happens, well, rarely happens overnight. And there's a lot of other factors to consider, you know, in terms of the energy of other people. Right. So, yeah, be patient yeah. with the process. Uh, absolutely. Well, you have been amazing. Thank you so <laughs> much. And thank you for just, you know, on the fly, uh, doing a reading for me, as well as doing a reading of your excerpt of your book. Put that book up one more time, Rebecca, Gabrielle. I want people to see there it. You there you, go. you can get that book right there on Amazon. I want you to run, not walk, run. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Show her that you love her and that you appreciate her. She's a gift. She's a gift. And the only way that you can, you know, figure out if it works for you is if you try it. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. it's like Dr. Pepper. Either you like it or you don't. It's as simple as that. So thank, thank you. you so much. Please tell my brains how to get in contact with you, Rebecca. Uh, you know, if you really want to ask the questions, if you want to do some deep diving or you're really serious about the work. Yeah, absolutely. So I am on social media. So look, my, my business name is Living With Spice. Dot com so you can find my website instagram facebook just look up livingwithspice.com you will find me there reach out to me i would love to hear from you and uh yeah my book is there ready for you to be able to purchase online on most online bookstores okay brains again i need you to love like and share what do i tell you all the time Love, like, and share. I go to the far ends of the earth. I vet these individuals. I have a conversation. Don't I have a conversation with you, Rebecca? 
Uh, you absolutely did. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, because I want to see if this is up to the level of standards that you deserve. It's not about me. I could talk to these people all day long for nothing. But I want to talk to them. I want to bring them to you so that you have options that you have to be, uh, you know, aware of what's going on. You can't say nobody told you. In the event you don't do it, that's one thing. But you can't say anybody didn't tell you. So I need you to love, like, subscribe, and share on all of the major pl uh, platforms. Go in, like Rebecca's page, let her know that you listen, leave a comment. Good, bad, or indifferent. This is how she is going to grow and evolve in spirit. You know, this is how she's going to formulate her questions, her why, so that she can grow in this space. And I adore you. Thank you so much. Thank you, April. I'm so, so grateful. Bless you. Yeah, bless you too. <laughs> Bye, brains. Bye.